avoiding making specific predictions about the Higgs boson. Even though we don't know which theory governs the behavior of Higgs bosons, or if they even exist at all, we understand very well what the standard model predicts about the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is on the left, while there are five other particles arranged in a column on the right. They are the most common particles into which the Higgs boson can decay. This is how we search for Higgs bosons. We pick a mass we want to study and find out how Higgs bosons of that mass are likely to decay. With the big announcement that's going to be made on July 4th, I really doubt that they're going to come out with the big grand announcement of finding the Higgs particle and finding it in such a way that it satisfies all of the expectations. A more complex concept of the Higgs particle would be needed. If we combine the ZZ and Gamma Gamma, a combined significance of five standard deviations, Success, success, success of one big spike here in this region here. As a layman, I would now say we have banged the Higgs boson. We have observed a new particle consistent with a Higgs boson. Ah. Which one? That remains open. The Higgs was exhibiting identity crises between the decay channels of the Atlas detector and the CMS detector. This indicated entanglement between the Higgs phenomena in both detectors. If we assume that there's just one Higgs particle, the problem is, is that in the CMS detector, the lighter mass is in the gamma-gamma channel, whereas in the Atlas detector, the lighter mass is in the ZZ channel. So this would indicate that the Higgs, the Gamma Gamma channel, has more mass than the Higgs, the ZZ channel. And then, if the ZZ channel now is more massive, and if the Gamma Gamma channel is lighter, How about that? the Higgs, the ZZ channel has a heavier mass here, and the Higgs, the Gamma Gamma, has the heavier mass here. What's your opinion about that? It, it, it could be a resonance phenomenon. So, so this, is th this is count at a certain energy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. They're not showing any coupling with the, the, the leptons or the quarks. That's right, yeah. It, and, they, it's just going to bosons. Or so we could correspond the masses like this. The problem here is that we have one particle and two detectors at the same time in both instances which is extremely peculiar and odd. So what's the alternative? And that is to go, okay, well, what we have is we just have the single Higgs particle, but there is a mass variation that's happening with its decay modes. The problem with that is, is then we have to explain not only why there is a significant mass difference between the gamma gamma and the ZZ channel, but why that reverses between the detectors. It looks like we're having sort of a, a quantum behavior of do we have one particle or two, and it looks like it depends on how you measure it. So the issue was uh, actually a uh, resonance phenomena in some sort of a correlation inside the ring where you would get correlation between what's detected here and exactly. detected there, and there's a dis observable some sort of phase phenomena between yeah. the two, so that the, there could be new phenomena of, of you know, the, the protons circulating in there, and that could have properties that we don't know. What the Higgs paradox is, is it appears that we have either one particle in two detectors at the same time, or we're having two particles, and in some way they're entangled in some new form of quantum behavior. So for there to be entanglement between the two detectors actually isn't that peculiar at all then. No, it's there not could expected, it's, but it's not right. peculiar. It, it could, uh, each proton could have a wave function inside the ring. This wasn't really weird as far as quantum mechanics is concerned, but oddly, it demonstrated a link between quantum entanglement and identity crises. In other words, this was a direct detection of the inclusion principle. The experimental data indicated the presence of not just one Higgs field, but two. Well, the Higgs uh, can, can interact with other particles, uh, and, and what was predicted is that the, the, the Higgs 
will interact more often, for example, with the top quark uh, than with the B quark, as a stronger coupling to the, the top quark. Well, what have we actually measured as of July of last year? We measured these guys with pretty good detail. We made some measurement of these guys, but they weren't all that accurate. And that's where we stand. We didn't measure this, we didn't measure this, we didn't measure this, didn't measure this. And these are the things as of July 2012 that we measured. Nothing that we measured showed it to be wrong. But that doesn't mean that it was right. It just means it's not guaranteed wrong. The uh, discoveries were of the Higgs boson decaying into a class of particles called bosons, which has a, uh, a spin with an integer 0, 1, 2, 3. There's another class that has half spin, one half, three halves, and so forth, and we only really look at one half. And we've recently seen that not only uh, do we get the same thing from what we discovered, which were the 0, 1, 2 particles, we're now seeing it in the half particles. We, we know that the matter particles are driving this explosion, and we also know they do it differently. So here's the Alice, here's CMS. This is data measurements. Now, what should it look like? If the Higgs boson didn't exist and everything was perfect, we would see the data along this left yet line. If the Higgs boson existed and it was exactly as predicted, we would find the data on the right hand line. And again, CMS and Alice. So that kind of tells you what you should be looking at. And this is what we had found about. But you so said you have to really learn some physics. If you're going to do particle physics, you have to take this kind of data and come up with an answer for it. You could imagine an explicit symmetry breaking, which would correspond to tilting the potential a little bit. What we're seeing with the Higgs data between Atlas and CMS is two overlapped, explicitly broken symmetries. Hi, my name is Dag, I work for Atlas. And I was uh, presenting uh, some, some measurements of the Higgs coupling to other particles. So the strength of the coupling is what determines how often it decays or the different things are produced by different That's right. But we can see then how, uh, if this agrees with what we predict, uh, or if there might be some, some new production mechanism that, that we haven't thought about yet. What we see is, is that it, it's within this precision we have, uh, it, it looks it does look like what, what you predict, even if you can maybe see a little hint of the market. <laughs> I'm uh, Stephen from the Atlas Experiment, and uh, my analysis, or my research, sorry, is on uh, dark matter searches at the LHC. So I've been spending a lot of time in uh, both the Beyond the Standard Model sections and the uh, Astroparticle Physics sections. So I can try to provide a bit of details there. You could say, well, why, why do we think that dark matter uh, has any connection? So maybe this is with the Higgs, maybe the, there's a connection between standard model and dark matter with the Higgs, maybe there's something else we don't know. There's a lot of theories out there which say that basically the best way to access new physics beyond the standard model is through the Higgs. There's a lot of reasons where you can say that you could go for that. And for example, dark matter um, is one of the prime candidates where you could say that dark matter is related to mass and the Higgs is related to mass, so there could be some form of extra special coupling there, so some special interaction where the only way you can produce dark matter is through the Higgs. Searches for a Higgs boson decaying to invisible particles, where you look at the things going the other way, and that's one of the things we need a lot more data for. So we found something new, and we're still trying to figure out what it is, what it does, what it means. We found this thing that could be the Higgs boson. Let's pretend it's the Higgs boson. What happens is the Higgs boson will go along because of quantum mechanics. It'll turn, turn into top quarks and anti quarks and go back into the Higgs boson. And, you know, it'll do all sorts of stuff. But the net effect is all these things, what we call quantum fluctuations, takes the observed equals theory and adds this term. So the maximum energy, if you look down here, turns out to be 10 to the 38 which is a big, monstrous number. This term here, bosons minus fermions, and the maximum energy, when you multiply those two guys together, it has to be really, really small, because this is a big, monster number. So this number has to be 